So I've just bought my CR2 mod chip from eBay. Uh, it was uh, $200 Australian delivered. That was, um, we're in the middle of 2015 at the moment. So that's around the price that they're going for. Um, what I thought was vehicle specific is nowhere near vehicle specific. Uh, they're basically just a mass produced unit. Um, thrown in a Ziploc bag couple of zip ties and some screws. Uh, the unit itself has a has a plug that plugs into your um, fuel pressure sensor on your fuel rail and that is it. Um, and then that just plugs into the box that plugs into the other end of your fuel rail. Um, so it basically intercepts the signal um, increases, decreases the pressure as it sees fit to then get your results. Uh, it comes with instructions. They're in English. You can see there, depending on what type of vehicle you have and what type of um, injection system it has, um, will depend on what type of sensor it has. So you basically just cut the plug to fit. Seems a bit um, barbaric, but you know, I'm sure it works, which I'll no doubt try and find out. The vehicle that I'm fitting this to today is a Australian delivered Ford Territory with a 2.7 litre uh, common rail diesel engine. Uh, this is a Ford Duratorque motor. Uh, it's been around for many years. It's the same in um, some Jaguar sedans. It's the same as a Land Rover TD V6, um, Peugeot HD, uh, uh, HDI. It's a DT17 or... Um, Oh, there's a couple of engine codes for it. But anyway, it's uh, 140 kilowatts, 440 newton meters, 2.7 liter six cylinder, um, V6 obviously. Uh, it's hooked up to a four speed, sorry, four speed. It's connected to a six speed um, all wheel drive in this um, seven seat SUV that comes to Australia. Uh, quick look of the car, it's called a Ford Territory. Google it if you wanted to know more info, but um, look, it motors along quite nicely. Um, average fuel consumption for about 33 kilometers per hour average speed. So we do a lot of city driving or a lot of stop start driving. For a two and a half ton plus all wheel drive vehicle and seven seat capacity, we see about 9.8 to 9.7 liters per hundred. Um, as I said, that's an average speed at 33 kilometers an hour. Higher average speed would probably indicate a, a better fuel economy, but um, we do mostly around town stop start driving, so the fuel economy is not the greatest. Um, but hey, look, it's pretty remarkable given the size and the weight of the vehicle um, and what it actually gets anyway. So, in any case, uh, basically, you start by pulling this cover off. Um, now, I'm going to do this one handed, so bear with me. There's a couple of clips that just sort of pop off. Um, from what I've read and heard, this should only be a five minute. Oh, I think we need to take this off. Um, five minute job, really. So we'll take him off. Just pop him aside for now. I'll just pop that little cap back on. Don't want anything. Accidentally falling down there, so you can see where it actually sits on these little points. So yeah, that shouldn't be too hard to get back on. Now we're looking for a fuel rail sensor, fuel rail pressure sensor. Um, I'm going to go with this right here. No. Okay, so the fuel rail pressure switch, pressure sensor, I should say. Uh, you can just see it behind this is one of your EGR pipes. It's um, just this fellow behind here. 
can see that's the fuel rail, the bung, and the sensor. I'll see if I can get some light. Actually, yeah, you can just see that little switch there with the wires. Right there with those three wires that go into it right there. So I'm going to unplug him. Um, not this switch, that switch. So that's a fuel rail behind this EGR pipe. It's a, it's a fixed pipe, it's a solid pipe, so you can't just push it out of the way. Um, so I'll unplug that, plug in the interceptor, and um, see how we go. All right, that's the uh, fuel pressure uh, regulator switch plug, whatever you'd like to call it. It's a three pin plug. That actually looks exactly like the one that's in the bag, so that's good. Um, as I said, the, the kits, these fuel pressure chips, they're usually quite generic as far as, um, you know, if it's a AC Delco, a Denso, a Siemens, a Delphi, or whatever brand ECU and injection and plugs and harness started out of that manufacturer uses, um, then it would probably just suit those. So that's probably as specific as it gets. It's got an adjustment screw in it, so we'll go into details once I plug that in. So just give me a second. All right, so this is the original plug here. And this is the plug that comes in the kit here. As you can see by the two of them, they're um, pretty much identical. As I said, this the plug, this sort of interceptor type loom, that end goes into your fuel rail as if it was the standard plug. Sorry, that end. That end goes into your loom. So it just plugs in. Again, I'm doing this one-handed, excuse me. Plugs in, done. This end plugs into your fuel pressure reg. This end plugs into the box. So just give me a minute and I'll uh, plug it all in. All right, so I've got one end plugged into the fuel rail, one end plugged into the loom. That's the wire joiner, PC, do the lackey. It joins into this box. All right, so they've given you a bit of loom length there so you can zip tie it out of the way somewhere in the engine bay. There's plenty of room, find somewhere inconspicuous. Probably somewhere behind that fuel filter or where the ABS module is, just somewhere out of the way. It um, looks quite waterproof because it's this resin type of situation. Um, use the other light. So basically, you can see this little adjustable switch here. It's preset to number five. It's a ten, um, ten point switch. So to me, it's like some sort of maybe variable resistor or something like that, uh, that then changes the voltage, resistance, whatever going in and out of whatever goes on here to then tell the computer to up pressure, lower pressure, blah, 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 things like that. They've told me in the instructions here to leave this switch alone. It needs to be left on A. And you can see there's a little B, I'll focus on that, there's a little B logo. So I've left it switched on A, and they default set it to 5. So the instructions say just leave it at 5 for now, but depending on what vehicle it is, uh, it says something about Toyota liking switches maybe 1 through 3, Audi, Volkswagen, things like that tend to like switches 7 to 10. So it says to just put it in there, leave it at five, flick the ignition on, wait for that LED to turn on. That means that everything's connected okay and it's getting the signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Well, the LED comes on, you can see it's shining red in the center of the screen right now. 
We've just left the unit sitting over there. It's it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, so as I said, it's set to default five. It says to try it at five. And if a warning light comes on the engine, it's not the end of the world. It's just probably going to maybe go into limp home mode or something like that. So then try it at maybe zero, then go one, two, three, four, etc., like that. But try it at five. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do now, and I'll um, I'll hit the key, see what it does. Okay. No, no warning lights. tidy it all up and take it for a test drive. Well, the final verdict, uh, I'm taking the chip out. So yeah, didn't do much for me. Did about half an hour of um, pretty extensive testing along the same stretch of road that I've always driven this vehicle sort of on so I know if there would be any difference. And um, yeah, aside from throwing a check engine light, when I got up to about the um, setting eight, uh, it, I honestly cannot tell a difference. So rule of thumb with that would probably be just to uh, take it back and ask for a refund. But different cars, different engines, different combinations might have other success. Um, I think this was an exercise that was relatively fruitless. Uh, somebody else might have other success. Thank you all.